Hello, everyone. This is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to another episode of the Druga Down Northern Expedition lore series. As we continue with episode seven, titled "A Rare Opportunity." Now, in our last six episodes, we covered the first Northern Expedition, which ended in failure after Masu's catastrophe at the Battle of Jieting. Now, following the retreat back to Hanzhong, Zhuge Liang and the army did not return to Chengdu, as many still believe that a second Northern Expedition could be launched right away, as they still had much of their food supplies, and with the weather turning warmer, as this was the spring of 228, the army should be ready to go. In addition. The march between Chengdu and Hanzhong was also no easy task. So even as Zhuge Liang himself remained unsure of the next steps, he did not want to immediately pull the army out of Hanzhong. Instead, Zhuge Liang decided to spend some additional time training the army, as the vast majority of this force were conscripts from farms, and the collapse at Jieting and the poor performances during their hasty retreat showed that the army itself needed more time to drill. Then, for the majority of 228, the army remained in Hanzhong as they drilled, trained, and farmed. And by winter of the same year, a rare opportunity presented itself as news of a grand victory by Wu over Wei out east at the Battle of Shiting reached Hanzhong. Now, not only did Sun Quan defeat Cao Xiu's 100,000 Eastern force. The Wei armies now had to scramble for reserves throughout their territory to shore up their defense on the eastern and southern fronts, as an emboldened Wu army might try to extend their victory. This meant troops on the western fronts were now being shifted east, and in a desire to coordinate with the Wu forces, Zhuge Liang wrote a letter to his older brother Zhuge Jin in the winter of 228. Stating his intentions to use the Chenchang Path to attack Wei's western forces, in a coordinated effort to open Wei up to a two-front war at a time that they could least afford it. Now, Zhuge Liang's plan to attack using the Chenchang Path was not a surprise, as there were only so many available paths out of the Qingling Mountain ranges. As we mentioned before, the two easternmost paths in the Ziwu and Tangluo. Were far too dangerous, as they had largely been reclaimed by nature following Liu Yan's actions in destroying these paths decades ago. Which is why, during the first northern expedition, Zhao Yun's diversionary force marched out of the Baoxie Path. But this well-maintained path is now in ruins following Zhao Yun's retreat, as he was forced to burn away and flood different parts of this path in order to stop Cao Zhen's forces from pursuing their army. This left Chenchang and Mount Qi as the only two paths that were traversable, and with the recent failures of the first northern expedition through the Mount Qi path and Guo Huai's actions to bolster its defense out west, Zhuge Liang naturally decided on the Chenchang path for the second northern expedition. While logical, this decision was too logical and predictable, as Hao Zhen would predict the same thing immediately following the end of the first northern expedition. And because of this, General Hao Zhao had already been sent to the fortifications at Chenchang, which stood at the end of the Chenchang Path, with 1,000 additional troops to farther fortify the location against future attacks. And that attack would come in the winter of 228, just month after the end of the first northern expedition, as the might of Zhuge Liang's entire army would press up against this fortification that had first gained fame. During the founding of the Han Dynasty, as this was precisely the location that the founder of the Han Dynasty, Liu Bang, had used to march out of Hanzhong, leaving us with the famed idiom "An Du Chenchang," or to secretly march out of Chenchang. Unfortunately, Zhuge Liang's arrival here was no secret for the Wei forces, who, while being heavily outnumbered, were ready for this fight. Now we do not have records of the exact number of troops on both sides, but it's safe to assume that Zhuge Liang would have at least more than fifty thousand troops, even by the most conservative measures, as upwards of eighty thousand was not out of the question. As for Hao Zhao, the defense of Chenchang, which was not a large fortification, could not have numbered over five thousand. So the attacker advantage was at least ten to one, if not twenty to one. 
But unfortunately, during the 3rd century, given the available siege technologies at the time, such a manpower advantage meant very little in a siege battle where the defenders were determined to fight to the death. And this was especially the case as after the first northern expedition, Yu Chu, the administrator of Longxi, would end up being hailed as the national hero for not surrendering to Zhuge Liang. So knowing that they will be handsomely rewarded for defending to the death, and knowing that General Cao Zhen had already predicted this attack by Zhuge Liang, Hao Zhao was confident that reinforcement would not be far behind as the Wei forces were much more prepared for this second northern expedition attempt by Zhuge Liang. So when Zhuge Liang first tried to have Hao Zhao's hometown friend Jin Xiang, who also hailed from Taiyuan, right up to the gates of Chen Chang to try to convince Hao Zhao to surrender, Hao Zhao refused as he twice stated his intention to fight to the bitter end, despite being massively outnumbered. And indeed, Hao Zhao's determination was not entirely foolish, as the Wei laws clearly stated that the defenders must defend for at least 100 days for their families back at home to not be punished, and should they defend for more than 100 days and no reinforcement would arrive, then they are free to surrender without causing harm to their families. In addition to being constrained by Wei laws, Hao Zhao also knew the fortification at Chen Chang was ready, as Zhuge Liang's first attempt to assault the city with modified ladders called cloud ladders and rams were soundly beaten back. Now cloud ladders, or yun ti, are a cross between a siege tower and a standard ladder, as they were loaded ladders with troops attached that would fold upwards towards the wall, and thus shorten the time it would take for troops to scale the ladder. However, the fortifications at Chen Chang included a partial moat that limited where the ladders would be allowed to launch from, and for the defenders inside to shoot fire arrows that would light these cloud ladders in flames, badly burning the troops attached to them. As for the rams, rocks were tied to ropes that were attached to the wall surrounding the front gates, and as these rams approached the gate, the rocks were thrown over the wall as these rope swung these heavy rocks around like pendulums over the front gate, effectively crushing the troops pushing the ram and breaking the rams themselves in the process. And seeing his initial assault fail, Zhuge Liang quickly changed strategies as he ordered for the construction of mobile arrow towers that were taller than the walls of Chen Chang, as archers soon started to pepper the defenders inside with arrows. But Hao Zhou was also no slouch, as while Zhuge Liang was busy constructing these mobile towers, Hao Zhou also ordered his troops inside to construct a makeshift wooden palisade that was taller than the towers. And once Zhuge Liang's mobile arrow towers were finished to just be slightly taller than the wall, as it was all that was needed, this even taller palisade were erected inside the fortification as a second tier wall that now offered defenders protection and effectively rendered Zhuge Liang's arrow towers useless. Now with his first two attempts beaten back, Zhuge Liang would not give up. But our episode here will come to an end as we'll return next time to see what else Zhuge Liang has up his sleeve and how Hao Zhao will try to counter them, as the Siege of Chen Chang will continue next time. So hopefully you all enjoyed this episode enough to hit that like button to help support the channel, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!